Hello, I'm Dr. Melissa Kong, one of the heart rhythm specialists at Silicon Valley Cardiology and Sequoia Hospital. You've probably already watched one of my partners, Dr. Greg Engel, talk about the basics of atrial fibrillation. And so now I'd like to talk with you about the indications for atrial fibrillation ablation and what you can expect at the time of your consultation. Atrial fibrillation is a chronic and progressive disease. We should think about it as a spectrum of disease with progression over time from paroxysmal or intermittent to persistent atrial fibrillation that occurs all of the time. While episodes often start out as random occurrences, maybe as infrequently as once a year, without treatment over time, atrial fibrillation episodes will occur more frequently and then these more frequent episodes start lasting longer. And then these more frequent and longer lasting episodes start running together and eventually atrial fibrillation occurs all of the time, which we call persistent. If your atrial fibrillation has been persistent for more than a year, we call it long-standing persistent. So who is a candidate for an atrial fibrillation ablation? And when should they have an ablation? The U.S. Heart Rhythm Society published the latest guidelines update in 2012, providing recommendations on who is a candidate for an atrial fibrillation ablation. As you can see, this table is quite complex, and yet it is still an oversimplification of the many nuances that go into evaluating each individual patient for consideration for catheter ablation as a treatment option for atrial fibrillation. However, there are three main take-home messages. First, if you have symptoms from your atrial fibrillation, catheter ablation may be a potential treatment option. Second, if you have previously taken medications for your atrial fibrillation and are still having symptoms of atrial fibrillation, you are likely a candidate for catheter ablation of your atrial fibrillation. And third, and most importantly, the earlier in the disease course you are evaluated and treated, the better. In other words, the likelihood of a successful atrial fibrillation ablation procedure is higher if your atrial fibrillation is still paroxysmal than if you are in persistent atrial fibrillation all of the time. Let's take a look at a figure our group published in the American Heart Journal on the long-term results of our atrial fibrillation ablations. The red line represents patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, while the green line represents patients with persistent atrial fibrillation, and the blue line represents patients with long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation. As you can see, the patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation had the highest procedural success rates, with approximately 85% of patients experiencing freedom from atrial fibrillation at one year after their last ablation. After an initial ablation, however, some patients develop recurrent atrial fibrillation due to the growth of reconnections from their pulmonary veins. For this reason, some patients require another ablation procedure to eliminate these reconnections and their success rate and likelihood of being free from atrial fibrillation increases significantly after another ablation. Because we are a high volume, expert center for atrial fibrillation ablation with referrals from all over the country and even internationally, we also have a lot of experience and expertise with tough cases and with patients who have been in atrial fibrillation for many years. About a third of our ablation patients have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, while over 50% have persistent atrial fibrillation, and the remaining 20% have long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation. Another of my partners, Dr. Roger Winkle, will share with you more in his video about our success rates depending on your type of atrial fibrillation. Okay, so what can you expect at the time of your consultation with us? We will, of course, review all of your records from your doctor, including echocardiograms, rhythm strips, EKGs, and your medications, both current and prior. We will also ask you to fill out our atrial fibrillation questionnaire, which provides us with additional information specific to your individual atrial fibrillation history. After evaluating this information and talking with you, 
we will be able to outline your options for treatment of your atrial fibrillation, such as an ablation or medications to control your atrial fibrillation. We encourage you to read the articles and information posted on our website at www.siliconvalleycardiology.com for additional in-depth information about our success rates, procedural risks, and outcomes. During your consultation, we will also discuss the details of how your procedure will be performed. I would encourage you to watch the next video in our series by my partner, Dr. Rob Patrawala, who will provide you with an in-depth review and demonstration of how we perform an atrial fibrillation ablation. Thank you.